Greetings science students. Let's start with a broad explanation of why the gas exchange needs to occur. So the trillions of cells in your body, all with their specialized functions, need oxygen in order to thrive and function. And this oxygen is supplied from the hemoglobin in the red blood cells, thanks to the left side of your heart, which pumps it out via the aorta through various arteries, through capillaries that reach those cells. And when those cells have used up that oxygen, the red blood cells become oxygen poor. So then the hemoglobin in the red blood cells transports that oxygen poor blood back to the heart, back to the lungs where the gas exchange occurs. So a quick and broad overview of the respiratory system. So in our atmosphere, we have a mixture of gases, which is the air that we breathe in through the nasal cavity. That air will go down via the pharynx, through the trachea and into the lungs. So a bit of lung anatomy. So the air has entered into the lungs through the two major pathways, um, the bronchus, either into the left or the right lung, and then it disperses into the bronchioles, which are your individual pathways. And then we get all the way down to these tiny little air sacs known as alveolus. Let's backtrack now to the circulatory system and talk about the blood vessels. So it's the right ventricle in terms of chambers of the heart that has pumped out oxygen poor blood, which travels via the pulmonary artery through to capillaries that attach to the alveoli. And then the gas exchange occurs and now the blood is oxygen rich. And so therefore it goes back into the blood vessels via the pulmonary vein, and that's going to enter the heart via the left atrium. And so this is where the gas exchange occurs between the respiratory system and the circulatory system. The circulatory system relies on the blood vessels, specifically the capillaries, um, which have thin walls to enable a efficient form of diffusion. And then we've got the tiny little air sacs known as alveoli, which also have thin walls that again, enable the diffusion to occur. So let's zoom in and look a bit further at the gas exchange. So this snake-like structure is the blood vessel, the capillary. And what we have here is on the left at the top, We've got a blood cell that is oxygen poor and carbon dioxide rich. So that blood vessel needs to unload some of the excess carbon dioxide and the capillary has a thin wall. So that carbon dioxide can efficiently diffuse in through the cell membrane and then we can exhale it out at the gas exchange. So the flip side of that coin is we have some oxygen that we've extracted from the air through inhaling. And then that oxygen will diffuse from the air sac across the cell membrane and attach onto the hemoglobin. And then we can basically direct that back to the heart where we pumped out to the cells. So I've mentioned a couple of times in this clip, the notion of diffusion. And what we mean by diffusion is simply the movement of particles uh, in a fluid in an area of high concentration to low concentration. So if we think about carbon dioxide, we have a high concentration of it in the blood cells that are oxygen poor. And so then through the gas exchange, some of that CO2 will diffuse across the cell membrane into the alveoli and then we will restore equilibrium in terms of the right levels of gases in the blood. To sum up, the cells in your body need oxygen to thrive. And after your cells have used up that oxygen, they become oxygen poor. And that oxygen poor blood 
is transported back to the right side of the heart and then it'll enter the lungs via the pulmonary artery and then a gas exchange will occur at the alveoli capillary level. The carbon dioxide will hop off and be exhaled and the oxygen will hop on to the haemoglobin and then the blood cells will be transported by the pulmonary vein back into the left side of the heart and then the left side of the heart will pump out that blood through the aorta to the cells in your body and then we'll repeat the process.